everyone, it's Steve Dangle and welcome to my weekly YouTube series where we look at the worst things from around the NHL. The name Toronto Maple Leafs was already taken, so this is called Steve's Dangits. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Hey, Philadelphia Flyers claiming the number one seed in the East. They look like an absolute wagon. Take it on the Montreal Canadiens who vanquished the Pittsburgh Penguins in just four games. Game one of that series produced a pair of Dangits. We're gonna start with one I don't think I've ever seen before. Here's Arturi Lekkinen. Well, he didn't do the best on this 2-on-0. Comes back the other way for Philadelphia. He's looked after the blue line. The Flyers are caught on a change. Could have a 2-on-0, and Lekkonen fell down. A 2-on-0 with the Flyers changing, and they didn't even get a shot out of this, but the puck comes through the blue of the crease. And a turnover at the offensive blue line by Konecki. You're in all by yourself. Maybe he looked up to see Sherratt was with him and just simply lost his edge. Watch as he's doing the crossovers. Oh, boy. Just unlucky timing for him. He tries to make a play from his seat of his pants, but can't, and a frustrated Lekkonen goes to the bench. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm loving Ben Sherratt's reaction on this. For, forget Lekkonen for a second. We just zoom in on Sherratt. He knows he's got a tap in, or at very least a grade-A scoring chance, and even he, for a second, is like, you're not gonna get it? I don't know. You tell me. Could, could Lekkonen not have whacked at this at least? Like, done some sort of shimmy? I don't know. The Montreal Canadiens are gonna be in so tough against the Philadelphia Flyers. They're obviously gonna have to rely on Carey Price, and they are going to need to capitalize on their chances to beat the number one seed in the East. A 2 on 0 and you do that? Friends, that is a dang it. Which brings us to our next dang it, which is not something that I've never seen before. It's something I see all the time. And remember I said the Montreal Canadiens are going to need Carey Price? Someone tell that to Xavier Ouellette. He's the goal scorer in a one to nothing Philadelphia lead on a power play goal. Little tip through for Grant. In alone, runs into Price as he missed the net. And Price just about nailed him with his blocker. Now he does give him a little push, but he was going to drill him with his blocker hand initially. In fairness to Grant, it's Ouellette who came flying in trying to make the play as what a well played set play in the middle of the ice a little chip to the outside grant coming in alone it's goaltender against shooter and that's a great sign to see Carey price getting up we'll watch to the right of your screen here as he let comes and he just unloads on him and hits him into his own goaltender now everyone's showing Carey price with the uh, to the fake punch on Derek grant which I laughed a little. To me, that's not the dang it, like Grant, ah, a little flinch. I mean, the dang it is Carey Price didn't do it. What are the Stanley Cup playoffs about? Injury prevention? You would have got away with it. Just punch him. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's a ritual. At the beginning of every game, the ref swallows their whistle. At the end of the game, they do a little you know, Heimlich maneuver and they spit it up and then they have it again. I should also point out that the cure is the Heimlich and if the puck goes over the glass, then it works. Otherwise, I, you can do whatever you want. I don't, I don't know what that was for, Carey. But also, he threatened the wrong guy. Watch this, watch this. Derek Grant is not even going to touch Gary Price. It's not one of those, oh, I've fallen and I can't get up. He was going to glide right by him. But Ouellette plows this guy into the franchise former MVP goalie of his own team. Listen. It's the Philadelphia Flyers and it's Carey Price. They're going to do that to him on their own. You don't have to do it for them. And we're all laughing at the blocker thing, but it's all fun and games until Carey Price is taken out of this series entirely. That's a dang it. We're going to stick to goalies for a while. This is, this is a hazardous time for goalies because there's the on purpose, the accidentally on purpose, the shoving a guy into your own goalie for no good reason, and whatever this is that happened to Andre Vasilevsky. And back comes Robinson the other way for Columbus. Flips that down. It took a funny bounce in the corner. Robinson in, and Vasilevsky makes the stop. Andre Vasilevsky on a strange cam out of the corner boards. Had to dive across and make that stop to take a goal away. Wow. And I don't know if Vasilevsky got hit as he was coming across, but yeah, there's a little blood there, Brian. You talk about desperation. Ooh, that's it. That looks like a dang it, and the aftermath looks like a dang it. Look at this. Vasilevsky bleeding from that knee to the head. He didn't get accused of faking an injury, did he? It'd be great if every player in the NHL was afforded that same benefit of the doubt. I, yep, still. But this is why dang it's are not necessarily bloopers or players making a bad play. This shows you how quickly the game turns. Puck takes a funny bounce off the glass. A bounce here or there, it could have been a dang it on Vasilevsky 
for having to dive and leaving a wide open net. But in this one, Robinson drills him in the head. Neither player did anything wrong here. They were just acting on instinct. Luckily, Vasilevsky was able to return to the game and play like 40 more periods, something like that. But whoo! Close call, that's a dang it. Sticking with the goalies for our next dang it. Hey, has this ever happened to you? You ever trade a goalie and then have to play that goalie in the playoffs? This is such a weird one. I know the NHL wanted to do right by teams by giving teams that weren't totally out of it a chance to play into the playoffs, but it doesn't change the fact that the trade deadline happened and a few teams sold. Both 12 seeds did. Remember Ilya Kovalchuk on the Habs? He's on the Caps now, which I, I also forgot. Robin Leonard was a Chicago Blackhawk for a hot minute. He was also a Toronto Maple Leaf for the hottest of minutes before getting sent in a three-way deal to the Vegas Golden Knights, who the Chicago Blackhawks are now playing in the first round. And I guess maybe to even the playing field, like, all right, Chicago, I know you're feeling bad about letting go of them. What if we only make them play with one skate? Blade. Wafted up the boards and it's taken by uh, Taves and Taves able to twist one back but it went between the point men and all the way back down. Robin Leonard's lost his blade again Doc and he's not blowing it dead and the bench is telling the officials we can't blow it dead. Robin Leonard's left blade is out of his skate. He's playing on his toe right now. And now play gets stopped. Is it the same side? It is Doc. It's the left blade. So all that tire changing hasn't really helped. What a power play opportunity. There's another five-hole chance, another five-hole chance for Kirby Dock. Taves keeps it alive to Kubelik. He tries to put it up in the top part of the net. He can't make it go. But there you see him playing on his left toe. That's such a helpless feeling. Robin Leonard, one of the best goalies in the NHL over the past couple years, and an absolute adventure to watch, somehow does not allow a goal missing one skate blade. I'm always amazed when players are able to get off the ice at all. Sometimes you see him crawl. I saw Travis Dermott lose a skate blade once and skate over to the bench on one foot. And there's me with my taped up ankles like, show off! But to keep his composure enough to keep the puck out of his own net and in a Stanley Cup playoff game against his former team, uh, it, it is a hat pick, but I'm sure it didn't feel like that in the moment. That's a dang it. And to end the video off, I, we got three huge ones. I'm not even sure which one I should do first. All right, I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do Rod Brindamore being not wrong. Now, he used some salty language that got him into trouble, and the NHL said you shouldn't have ought to have said that. Here's what made him so upset. I want you to explain how this is a goal. Player, Bruce Cassidy has moved him around a bit. Andre cautious that guy right now as Morozik attempts to make it happen and can Charlie Coyle with a cash in. Now Morozik will complain. Boston celebrates, and they might have a 2-1 to -one lead. seems fairly confident that this one's going to get overturned, but we'll have to take another look at it. Carolina is challenging to play for a missed stoppage in the offensive zone. There's Richie. He never takes his hand off it, but he does direct it. Yeah. Slavin was there, too. And it's... Let's see. Is it a high stick, too? Slavin got it. It looks like Richie might touch it there. Sure does. Right? And if so, that... I think that's going to get called back. Get turned Charlie. over, yeah. After reviewing the play, there was control and possession by the goalter, therefore nullifying the hand pass. Carolina is charged with minor penalty for delay of game. So they, they rule that Morozik had frozen the puck. After the hand pass, it's a goal. It's Charlie Coyle's goal. Make I'm, it two to one. I'm confused. And a power play. If he throws it, then the whistle should have blown, right? Right. Hey, wow! The Bruins got a call. That was very interesting that they got a call. 
that that never happens. First and foremost, obviously my entire life is just complaining about the Boston Bruins. In my experience, a lot of Bruins fans are actually really cool to talk to. They're actually really fun. A lot of Boston sports fans get the concept of fun. There are, however, a significant chunk of them, the only word they know is cry. Yes, hi, Mr. Official, sir. I, I would like to calmly explain several pages of why that's not a goal. If you look at the video replay, that's not a goal. If you look at how the game is called, that's not a goal. If you Look at common sense. That's not a goal, sir. That's not a goal. Cry. Oh, guy, he grew up cheering for the Bruins. It's no point. I mean, I would probably only know one word if I got the vast majority of calls for a decade and a half. I'm joking. I'm joking. Relax. For what it's worth, though, I didn't think it was a trip on Bozak in the Stanley Cup final. I didn't. It's good call there, Rick. Put away your whistle. Let him play. Where was I? My therapist specifically told me not to do that rant. Okay, Peter Morazic has the puck. He has it. That's under his glove. That's dead. What, uh... It's confusion. Wait, what is it? Here's the full Rod Brindamore quote that got him the big old $25,000 fine. The guy comes to me, I, I love that he calls him the guy, the guy comes to me and says it's either goalie interference because he has it and the guy knocked it out of his hand or it's a glove hand pass. You gotta pick one. Either way, it's a no goal. What? You have to tell me what the call is. He's telling me to pick one. Who doesn't love Rod the Bod, man? Uh, he continues. He comes to me and says, pick one. I'm like, well, it's one of the two. There's absolutely no way that can be a goal. He's putting it on me to pick it. Well, you tell me what you're calling. You're calling he had it? Then it's a bleeping goaltender interference. Have fun with this, Drew. If you're saying he didn't have it, you're not telling me what call you're making and I have to pick one? Then they go upstairs and say, oh, he had possession? It's horse bleep. This is where the league is a joke. Hmm, is that enough to get him fined? I'm not sure. Oh wait, there's more! Rod Brindamore on overhead refs. The guys up there that aren't putting any sweat equity into the game decide the game. It's wrong. He doesn't tell me what the call is on the ice. If it's not a glove hand pass, I would have said okay. Then it's a bleeping goalie interference. <laughs> there's no way that's a goal in any league. We have a million people doing this and they can't get it right. That's the problem with this league. I don't normally do this, but I feel like this would be a good time to pull up the shirtless picture of Rod Brindamore from this past week. You think they had to draw straws for who had to tell Rod Brindamore he was fine? From Tic Tac Tomar, the league definitely didn't give Rod Brindamore that fine to his face. Ah, oh, people are funny. Listen. Rod Brindamore can get fined $25,000. After all, he's a head coach in the National Hockey League, and he criticized officials in the National Hockey League. So, I guess that's that then. Oh, what's that? I don't work for an NHL team, and I can say whatever the hell I want! The NHL cannot decide what the rules are of its own game, and they change them every single year, and then even after the changes, they don't enforce them! Well, you don't understand. It's a fast league. That's what the video is for! Can you explain this to me? Why do officials not have to be available after the game? At very least, upon request. Well, it's a really hard job, and they're gonna make mistakes every game. Welcome to your dream of being an NHL player, then! They have to come out after every single game, dumping the puck in wrong, giving it away, and answer for their mistakes. Why don't you? That's not a goal in your beer league, and it's definitely not one in the National Hockey League. That's a dang it. Uh, good enough for you, Rod? Win it for James, all right? Love ya. What else we got? Oh, Drew, this one's mean. The quickest of dang it's. Remember how I said, like, you don't have to make a giant mistake. You don't have to have screwed up to get into a dang it's video. The Edmonton Oilers and Pittsburgh Penguins deserve it a little, yeah? Bro, you're the two five seeds. You're basically guaranteed to make the playoffs. If the season were to continue, which it very didn't, they would have made it. But because it very didn't, we have this scenario where they could have missed, and they both did, in four somehow to 12 seeds. The Penguins went out and got the band back together with Connor Sherry. They got Jason Zucker and Jake Gensel back from injury. The Edmonton Oilers went out and got Tyler Ennis, Andreas Athanasiu. They were a wagon. They looked as good as they've looked in years. <laughs> Both of them. The Edmonton Oilers, I think, are gonna be a little calmer about things, but based on Jim Rutherford's comments with the Penguins, I don't think it's gonna be the same over there. Oof, for both of them, for both five seeds to get knocked out before the Stanley Cup playoffs begin, and not the NHL playoffs, that weird little distinction, that's a dang it. Our final dang it, the Toronto Maple Leafs. Why, Steve, because they lost to Columbus? No, no, no. 
because the body of the leaf season was not cold and in the ground when this happened. The NHL draft lottery, they have that one dude standing there, super awkward, holding the balls, and he's got his sweaty hands, and he dropped the Rangers one, and everyone's got their own conspiracies about that. And if that dude is watching this video, don't feel bad about the conspiracy theories because you dropped the Rangers ball. There are conspiracy theories about everything. There are people who think the dinosaurs aren't real. There are people who think that Kawhi only made a shot against the 76ers because the ball had magnets in it. I am not making that up. You can Google it. Wait, no, don't. But I say all that to say this. Can we get a slow motion of what happened? at the NHL Draft Lottery. Show it again. Here it is, the Toronto Maple Leafs ball. It's about to be select. The Minnesota Wild contribute nothing to anybody! Why? The New York Rangers won the 2020 Draft Lottery getting Alexei Lafreniere, if they do so choose. And the Toronto Maple Leafs were this close, show it again, this close, and the Minnesota Wilds ping pong ball knocked them out of the way! This incident at the draft lottery, my team, my existence, is a dang it. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if I like this, if you like this video, I, I am rattled. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends to just, we can go back to 31 teams once Seattle arrives. Just get rid of the wild and the Bruins. We can go back to 30.